Hi everyone, welcome to our Reggie Q&A. My name is Jamie Butler and I'm the Communications Associate for EEN Action. Um, Kim and Carolyn are gonna introduce themselves and then we're gonna get right into some questions. My name is Kim Anderson and I'm the Associate Director for Outreach for Ohio and Pennsylvania. Hi, I'm Carolyn Hackman, I'm the PA Policy and Outreach Coordinator. So first off, what is Reggie? So Reggie stands for the Regional Greenhouse Gas Initiative and currently includes all states from Virginia to Maine except for Pennsylvania. The electricity sector is the second largest source of carbon dioxide and other health impacting toxins in Pennsylvania. Reggie would set up a regional limit on carbon pollution from electric power plants, putting a fee on carbon and making polluters pay to clean up their own messes. This revenue gets invested straight back into Pennsylvania. Psalm uh, chapter 24, verse 1 says, The Lord, earth is the Lord's and everything in it, the world and all who live in it. For Pennsylvanians to be good neighbors, we must consider the impact fouling God's creation has on our children's health. Reggie helps ensure clean air and pure water for our children and future generations. Thank you. And can you say more about the financial benefits of Reggie? Um, sure, there are a lot of financial benefits for Reggie. First of all, it, it's estimated to create about 30,000 new jobs in the state of Pennsylvania. Also, it would generate funds that could be reinvested in Pennsylvania in ways such as supporting economic recovery, creating new jobs, increasing clean energy production, and lowering consumer energy costs, which would have a huge impact on Pennsylvanians. We are the only state in the region that doesn't currently benefit from Reggie, um, but states that have joined Reggie have cut power pollution by 45%. And every year that we delay, we're losing money and new jobs. The funds from Reggie could be used to reinvest to train Pennsylvanians for new careers. It's estimated that $1.5 billion has been lost since 2021 that could have been reinvested in Pennsylvania. The Pennsylvania Department of Environmental Protection estimates that participating would increase our GDP by $2 billion between 2022 and 2030. Wow. And what are the health benefits of Reggie? There are a lot of health benefits for Reggie. Um, first of all, it would create cleaner and pollution-free air and pure water. It would have health benefits for all Pennsylvanians, but especially for the most vulnerable, like children, pregnant women, and the, their unborn babies and the elderly. Um, Pennsylvania is the 46th out of 50th of in air and water quality. Reggie could prevent 639 premature deaths and 30,000 fewer hospital stays a year. Personally, this impacts me because I struggle with allergies and have my whole life and um, cleaning up the air would help make that better and would mean less people would struggle with allergies. Also, about two years ago, my family moved in with my parents to help care for them as they age. Both of my parents have dementia and there are links between various types of pollution and dementia. My father was a brilliant chemist when he was still working before he retired. And it was hard to watch him go from having 32 patents to his name to a state where he had trouble coming up with words or buckling a seatbelt and doing very simple things. I fear that someday that will be me if I'm continued to be exposed to pollution. And I hope that we can clean up our air and purify our water so that I can have a brighter future. Thanks for sharing. And what are some of the health impacts for Pennsylvanians if Reggie is not implemented? So carbon pollution results in rising temperatures, and that has led to a variety of health risks and impacts, including uh, increase in vector-borne diseases, transmitting from ticks and mosquitoes. Pennsylvania is feeling this impact as the Commonwealth has the highest number of Lyme disease cases in the United States, with approximately 38% of all Lyme disease cases happening here in Pennsylvania. Ticks can trans transmit pathogens such as various parasitic worms, viruses, bacteria, and to make matters worse, there are several several emerging tick-borne diseases about which little is known. This actually had a personal impact on my family just recently. Um, back in June, um, I actually had to go away for a few days and I, during my stay away, I got a call from my husband and my son's school saying that he had a bug bite. And when I rushed home, I saw the bug bite and immediately went to the ER where the clear bullseye made it so that we knew the diagnosis before they told us and that was Lyme disease. Um, so while this is just not just our family going through this, many families across the Commonwealth are experiencing that fear, that, that anxiety because of Lyme disease and definitely carbon pollution being impacted by Reggie would lessen these effects going into the future. 
Fossil fuel combustion that results in carbon pollution is often the main source of soot, PM2.5 pollution. Recently, researchers identified the 10 worst air pollution hotspots in the country, analyzing factors like local geography, local industry, and vehicle traffic and how they affect air pollution levels. Many of these hotspots are not surprising. Central Atlanta, Chicago's South and West Sides, Los Angeles, and Houston. But one entry among these worst offenders is likely unexpected, semi-rural central Pennsylvania. The region, encompassing the Harrisburg and Lancaster areas, ranked as the eighth most polluted in the country. PM2.5 has been linked to asthma, severe allergies, autism, ADHD, dementia, cardiopulmonary diseases, and a shorter lifespan. And this has a personal impact on my family as well. My son was diagnosed with autism and ADHD. And when we started this journey with the diagnosis, we didn't know how wonderful but also challenging it would be. Where I was pregnant, uh, it was in Chester, Delaware County, Pennsylvania. And according to the American Lung Association, Delaware County is the worst metro area for, in Philadelphia for PM2.5 pollution. Given that medical research has shown a connection between PM2.5, autism, and ADHD, we will always wonder if our environment, our air, had a detriment, detrimental impact on our son. We did all the genetic testing, and we know that at this point, with current medical research, our son's autism is not genetic. Reggie not only limits carbon pollution, but also other toxins like PM2.5, lessening this risk not only for my family, but yours as well. Furthermore, PM2.5 is a leading cause of in uterine inflammation, which is causes preterm birth. Preterm births account for 75% of perinatal mortality and more than half the long term morbidity. Preterm birth and low birth weight, which has been linked to methane exposure by the recent medical study, are leading risk factors for death in the first month of life, contributing to an estimated 1.8 million deaths worldwide. And with all these health impacts in mind, Reggie is instrumental to helping our children and future generations survive and thrive. In addition to the things that Carolyn mentioned, recently the Asthma and Allergy Foundation of America came out with a list of the top 10 asthma capitals in the United States. Pennsylvania was had two on that list of top 10, Allentown and Philadelphia. We need to find ways to clean up our air and Reggie could help do this. Lastly, what can Pennsylvanians do to support Reggie? Yeah, so you can go to the EEN Actions website and show your support for Reggie today by signing our petition that will go to Governor Shapiro and your state legislators. You can also like and follow EEN Action on social media. Show your support by sharing our posts or making your own and tagging the governor and your state legislators. You have a voice and a powerful one at that. Let's support Reggie today. Awesome. Thank you both so much for all of that helpful information. And thank you all for watching. Bye.